The Philips CDI CD Interactive is a strong candidate for the title of worst game console of all time. In the early days of the system it was mainly marketed as a multimedia system for the whole family that had educational applications as its main draw. After a few years Philips rebranded it a games console, but as we know from history, wasn't very good at it. Most games were either bad or very mediocre. I have collected 10 games that at least try to be games here that I think are the worst. Dragon's Lair, the fantasy adventure where you become a valiant knight on a quest to rescue the fair princess from the clutches of an evil dragon. I hate this game. I can't put it any higher due to its legendary status, but I just want to say, I hate it. Dragon's Lair is an interactive cartoon, the hero Dirk the Daring is on a quest to rescue Princess Daphne from the dragon Singe, and it's your job to try to control him. Well, you don't control him in a traditional sense, of course, you watch the cartoon up to a point, then press something and hope he survives. The first screen I can get by, but then it starts getting inexplicable. You have a tiny time frame in which to press the right button, up, down, left, right, or button 1 for the sword. The game is all about memorization, kind of like Simon Says with a cartoon playing over it. The original arcade version must have been very expensive, seeing as how you die all the time. The CDI port is one of the best home versions though, because if it was one thing the CDI could do, it was full motion video. The sequel, Dragon's Lair 2, Time Warp, had flashing indications to which direction you should press, but this one doesn't for the most part. I can't play this game. I think it's awful. And since I never played it as a kid in the arcade, I have no sense of nostalgia to save me. But one thing, isn't Dragon's Lair kind of gory? I mean, just look at this cute little purple minion here. Oh. I actually like FMV shooters, first and foremost for the laughably cheesy acting, but also because they are playable. This first one, however, fails bad at that. See, the others have an option to have a crosshair on the screen while playing, which makes you see where you're aiming, but this one doesn't, except on the menus. I don't need help surviving the menus. The CDI pistol isn't the best either. It uses air mouse technology, which is quite a bit slower to react than a light gun. Since the video is always the same, the game becomes about memorization, but it's still too hard thanks to the lack of a crosshair and that you seem to have to be very exact with where you're pointing and when. If playing with a controller you do get a crosshair, but it moves so slow with a controller that it's very very hard to make your mark. The quick draw sequences are even worse, forget about them. I have no idea how they work. If I get to one, I know it's game over. And every time it's game over, I get to see this Undertaker guy breaking the fourth wall by telling me how many lives I have left. You better work on your sharpshooting, stranger. You only got two lives left. You shoot your little gun wheel thing to reload, but it's so small, and most of the times when I try to reload, I get shot in the meantime. Playing this game would be complete agony if not for the fun, cheesy acting. People fall down with great enthusiasm, and I especially like the bartender who looks at the cameraman instead of the camera. Be careful, that's Mad Dog's boys over there. Later gun games got better, but this one is a pain to endure. Looking at my keys, stranger? Do you like baseball? Yes. Do you like baseball games? Yes. Do you like to be able to hit the ball when you're playing a baseball game? Yes? It's on the black, strike! Then this game is not for you. Video Speedway, the ultimate racing experience. That's a bold tagline, especially for a game that's this bad. And speed? I didn't feel much sense of speed in this game. This game is very boring. No matter which mode you choose, F1, F3000 or kart, it's just boring. Before every race you have to do a qualifying race, should you want to keep going after that, the actual races are no better. There's multiplayer up to 4 players, but it's fake multiplayer, alternating. The sound effects? Listen. The graphics, 
so-so. The backgrounds are okay and the track does the expected alternating colors thing to make it look like you're racing, but still it's just so boring. Night Driver was more fun than this. Night Driver is more fun than this. Huh, I think I'm gonna go play some Night Driver. Zombie Dinos from Planet Celtoid. It has a good title and a great theme song. Unfortunately, the title and theme song writes checks that the game does not cash. Not even close. Some guy from Planet Celtoid, the leader of the Brain Blobs, has used a time machine to pick up dinosaurs from prehistoric eras and brought them to modern times to destroy stuff as part of his plan for world domination. Me name is Harry the Harry, a fool! I come from Zeltoid, with the aliens to rule! This lizard guy is your guide, and he has a time machine of his own, complete with a computer woman who can tell you about dinosaurs. I think this game is supposed to be educational, to teach kids about dinosaurs. So the main object of the game is to rescue dinosaurs from the brain blobs. You pick a square on the map to go to and hope there's a dinosaur there to rescue. 95% of the time there isn't though, and half the time when you don't find a dino, the lizard guy teases you. Whatever you're looking for, try looking where there's something besides nothing. You have 24 hours in each time period to find a dinosaur, and going to a square takes 1 to 3 hours from your time. When the time runs out, and after being taunted by the lizard guy many times, the dino in question is taken by the brain blobs and brought to present time to destroy stuff. And they show it to you. Is it a real dinosaur or a genetic experiment gone wild? That's the question in Moscow today. Is this is ridiculous. This After that, on to more dinosaur finding, more getting teased, and more boredom. After being lured in by the title, it's disappointing that the game is so boring, and the voices get really annoying after a while. But at least the theme song is still awesome in its cheesiness. Let's kick some brain! This is one of the worst fighting games ever. The move list is incredibly limited. The difficulty is insane. You can only play as one character. When playing two players, the second player has to be the cyborg. If you switch on the music, it'll switch off the sound effects for some reason. But at least you don't have to subject your ears to them. This game was hyped a lot when it came out, but it's a real stinker. And on CDI, there's one extra insult. Loading times. This game is disturbing. It's a rail shooter in the same style as Chaos Control or Solar Crusade, where FMV plays in the background and you steer a crosshair across the screen and shoot stuff. Standard stuff, but this game seems bent on making you feel as uncomfortable as possible in all possible ways, even emotionally. Hey, I'm not the, one who wanted kids. You did. the host guy is unpleasant and reminds me of Kevin Farley, even though it's not him. The levels take place on a roller coaster as you roll through different time periods of a lifetime from infancy to old age. You shoot at stuff corresponding to the time period, all the while the game continues to try to make you feel bad. The gameplay itself is also subpar because the targets fly past so quick that they're hard to shoot. I suppose playing with a mouse would be the best. This game is all around very unpleasant. In fact, it's mean. Of course the games the CDI is known and dreaded for made the list. For CDI games they're being pretty ambitious, the graphics are nice and hand-drawn, and the music is good, but that does not excuse its gameplay. Playing these games is a frustrating experience. I feel I don't have any new complaints to add though to what's already been said, but they're not the worst games ever, 
and not even the worst on the CDI. There's still two more numbers on this list after all. This guy sucks. I had an open mind before playing this game, because I do like minigolf games. 3D Ultra Minigolf is great, and even the ones on cell phones are a decent way to pass the time. But then I played this piece of interactive entertainment. You can't aim your shot like you can in any other golf game. Only pick three directions, and several times none of the directions seems like the right one. But the directions don't play that big of a role anyway, since it's all about timing. Busted and broken timing. It seems completely random to me, and 90% of the time the shots are for nothing. And like Mystic Midway and Zombie Dinos before it, the developers figure that playing a bad game isn't enough. You need to be constantly bombarded with audio that annoy you even more. In this game this comes from Eugene Levy. Yes, that Eugene Levy. I didn't even know he was a comedian, and I still don't after playing this game. He's not funny. Just annoying. American Railroads, a demonstration of our national resolve to get things done, enhance commerce, and move from state to state to avoid paying bills. Well, you know what? I wanted to put this at number one, but as some people on YouTube have suggested to me before, this game can be enjoyed by kids. And I know from personal experience that kids can be very stupid. Dark Castle made its debut on Macintosh in 1986. It was a success and from what I heard, a good game. There you could aim with the mouse and control the rest with the keyboard. Then it got ported to various home consoles and a lot was lost in the translation. Dark Castle on Philips CDI is almost unplayable. It's slow, hard to control and the enemies kill you in one hit, be they mice, bats or Frankenstein monsters? Walking around is slow. Walking downstairs slow, and you can't attack while on them. Speaking of attacking, here's how it works. When not on stairs or a rope, press down to make your arm reach for the sky, then press down or up to aim, then button 1 to throw rocks. It's very, very clunky. It's also impossible to walk down a small, small ledge without tripping like a fool. You have to jump. And the jump length is of course predetermined, so you'll either jump right into an enemy or get shot by the Frankenstein while waiting for the enemy to move out of the way. And this is not the game where it's easy to control things quickly. The graphics are generic, but not too bad actually, especially for 1992. There's no music during the stages, but luckily, there's plenty of sound effects. Apart from the Macintosh version, I think the Mega Drive version is the one most people have played. That version controls better and more smoothly, the scrolling actually scrolls instead of just shifting. But there's one little detail that the CDI version actually does better, believe it or not. In the Mega Drive version you have to press up and B to pick up items. But in the CDI version, you can just walk over them, and the guy will pick it up himself. Yeah. Overall, this game is terrible. Playing it gets you nothing. Non-gamers might tell you that you're wasting your time when playing video games. If you're playing Dark Castle, they would be correct.